hi guys and welcome back to my channel welcome if you are new my name is Benji welcome back if you are an OG today's video is such a surreal video for me to make because I've been wanting to do this for the past five years I can't believe I'm finally sitting here talking about it it's been done so today we are going to dig into my breast reduction surgery and I want to get right into it because there's a lot to get through and I only want to do like one of these videos I will do more if there are more questions uh, but I'm going to try to answer as many questions in this video as possible and give you guys as much information as I can to be honest um, most of my questions came from Instagram um, there wasn't a ton of uh, other questions from like YouTube. I think I only asked you guys here on YouTube if you have done a breast reduction and if you did, what was your experience? So, if you guys on YouTube have questions, please do put them down below. And if I have to do a follow up video, I have no issue doing that. But I'm going to be trying to get through and give you guys as much information as possible so that if this is something that you're thinking about doing or something you, somebody in your life is thinking about doing this, then you will have all the information that you need. I have a microphone here and I'm hoping that it's not, I'm using it for the first time. So if there's a little bit of noise, things happening, that's probably why. Okay, so I had a breast reduction recently. I am four days away from being three weeks post-op surgery. Um, and I wanna start from the very beginning. So my, I started thinking about getting a breast reduction um, five years ago and I just it's just a fleeting thought right and then I started thinking oh my gosh the scars oh my gosh um, what like how long do I have to be out for like recovery all of that and I kind of gave up three years ago I started thinking about it again kind of went through the motions a little bit started researching a little bit more um, and then again decided not to and then again two years ago and then one year ago is when I definitely was like this is something that I really want to do so one year ago I decided actually like doing deep research on it like the recovery time the scars I started watching people's videos who had it done I started looking at different doctors in my area that were doing it um, and that like that pushed me into like looking into how do, am I going to pay for it? Is it going to be through like insurance? Um, I looked at it out of pocket for me. It was going to be around like 15,000 or something like that. I was like, girl, we don't got it like that. Okay. So we got to figure this out. So I would say I reached out to my insurance company. Uh, I want to say I have Blue Cross or Blue Shield of tax of Illinois. It doesn't matter what insurance you have. You still have to call them. Each insurance has their own specific criteria. So when people ask me, what insurance did you use? I'm always like, call your insurance. It won't matter. If you have the same one, it doesn't mean that it's covered under your plan. So I reached out, I reached out to my insurance and they let me know um, that it is something that was covered in my plan. And then they have specific criteria for uh, what you needed to do. Now, I didn't really understand like what the criteria meant. Like it wasn't like, it didn't make sense, honestly. So basically I was like, mm, I'm going to do this another way. Like I'm just going to research doctors and go from there, which is not the way that you should do it. You should really figure out what the criteria are so that you kind of know what to work with. So I will say about May, May, June, July, May, June, July, I researched doctors. Like I researched a lot of different doctors. I had seven consultations done and I finally picked the doctor that I wanted. Um, I ended up going to lift plastic surgery um, here in Houston, Texas. Um, They're based out of Webster, Texas, which is like maybe 30 minutes outside of central Houston. Um, that's what I decided to go with. Now I decided to go with specifically lift plastics and Dr. Patel for a couple of reasons. I saw quite a few of his, um, patients post about their experience um for me it's all about from the time that i walk in to the time that i see the doctor all of that so i just wanted to make sure that i was comfortable throughout and his team seemed like really fun so like i saw a lot of his patients and everybody had really amazing and great things to say um so i made a consultation that was the very last consultation that i had so i made a consultation and when i got there um he was very 
like open, honest. And I didn't feel like there was a point where I couldn't ask them questions. Sometimes, not all doctors, but some doctors can almost give off this impression of like, I'm a doctor, you're not. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm doing. But excuse me, you're cutting into my body. You're going to answer every question. I don't care how dumb it is. I want to feel comfortable asking you every question. I don't want somebody to cut into me that I, you know, I don't have like trust in them. So from the very first time, I would say that um, I'm a little shy at first. So it took me a little while to kind of like open up and really ask all the questions that I wanted. Plus, I already done a ton of research. So it may have seemed like I didn't have a lot of questions, um, but I I did. Um, so from that point, we had the consultation. We talked about kind of what my issues were, which I never really had a ton of back pain. I This is why I didn't think my insurance was going to be able to cover it because I didn't have back pain. I had extreme neck and shoulder pain and I never attributed that to having heavy boobs um, I always heard people saying back pain back pain back pain so that's why I never thought that my boobs were the cause of my pain I just always thought it was something else um, and I just have lived with this pain in like my neck and shoulder area for so many years every time I went to go get a massage um, they would always say oh my god your neck and your your neck and your shoulders are like super tight. I felt like I was just wound up all the time and I didn't even realize it. Um, which is funny because when I posted my picture of being out of the hospital, one of my really good friends texted me. She was like, your shoulders, you look so relaxed. It looks like your lower face is relaxed. So yeah, I never thought about that. But when I started talking to my doctor, I started telling him kind of like, you know, I have the grooves in my shoulders from wearing bras. And I started telling him I have neck and shoulder pain. And that's when he was like, that, that is definitely could be coming from having a, a bigger chest. And I was like, huh, you don't say. As soon as he said that, I was like, yeah, if that's the case, this is definitely something that I want to do. So I left that appointment and I was like, yep, this is the doctor that I want. Also, he didn't use drains. Drains are like those tubes that come out of you when you have surgery and they drain out like extra fluid and blood and all of that. But they're super inconvenient. They, It's not matter of fact but i feel like everybody who has drains at some point uh not everybody but like i feel like when i watch videos of people who had surgery and they had drains they had infections and i was like no i don't want an infection so decided to go with a doctor that could do the surgery without drains and he does that he doesn't use any drains i was like you're my guy let's get this going so give him my insurance left um that was in august of last year august nothing um September, nothing. October, nothing. Finally, the end of October, I called my insurance and I was like, hey, like what's happening? Um, I'm just calling the checkup and see what's going on. And they were like, we didn't get anything. And I'm like, what do you mean? So I called the doctor's office and they're like, hey, and they're like, we sent everything. And I'm like, what is happening? So then like there was this back and forth and I kind of gave up because my insurance said they didn't get anything. My doctor is literally saying that we sent it. They're like, we're going to resend it. Like there's just this back and forth. And I just kind of gave up and I felt like maybe my insurance got it and they just didn't want to cover it. I don't know. I just felt like it was weird. So I gave up. And then um, in January, I remember I started running. I started going for runs. And I remember coming back from a run and my neck and my shoulders were in excruciating pain. Like it was even hot to the touch to the point where I was like in tears i was like crying and i got so tired and i know it seems like you're crying over that but i got so tired of living my life in constant pain and like my insurance company that i pay for every every single paycheck is not taking me seriously i just felt like i needed to advocate for myself and i ended up calling the doctor's office again and i was like listen i really want the surgery is there any way we can redo everything? And the girl who answered the phone, like, God sent. And she was like, you know, at that time we were going through kind of like a turnover with some staff. I'm not sure if everything was done correctly, but please just know I will send out all your paperwork today. So I spoke to her towards the end of January. She sent out all my paperwork and literally two weeks later, I think I was actually on getting on a plane to go to Colorado for my birthday in February. And I got a text from her that literally crushed me. She was like, your insurance has denied your breast reduction claim. Um, 
I'm sorry, we can give you a quote if you want to do it out of pocket, blah, blah, blah. And I remember just being so upset. I didn't even reply. I just left it alone. I was just like, this is ridiculous that, you know, I have to live in pain. And just because I don't have huge, 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 gigantic boobs, I feel like my pain isn't taken seriously. So... I went on my birthday trip. I left it alone. I didn't think about it. I was like, I'm just going to figure it out. When I come back, maybe I can figure out something else. I can try to come up with the money. I can maybe use my bonus or something like that to do it uh, from work. Turns out we didn't get a bonus, but that's another something else. Um, yeah, so I was just very, I was just very like, I just, I was just, down so had a great birthday came back and a week later something randomly told me because i have my app on my phone um my uh blue cross blue shit app on my phone because i had a lot of dental work done and i was going on there to make sure that um everything was getting processed well and then i also um have been on ozempic and Manjar and now i bound so i downloaded the app because it lets me see if my pre-authorizations went through and all of that something told me log on to the app so I log onto the app and I'm looking at all like my authorizations and I look at my breast reduction authorization and I click down on it and it says approved. Yep, it says approved. The nipple graft was not approved, but the actual breast reduction surgery was approved. I never really wanted a nipple graft, so I don't know why that was even on there. So I immediately started texting my doctor's office. It was like late at night, couldn't call. But they have like a little portal where you can text. And I was like, hey, I just looked at my insurance. It says that my reduction was approved. Hey, take a look at this. And I took a screenshot and I sent it to them. Immediately, like 7 a.m. the next day, she was like, oh my gosh, let's get things rolling. I'm going to call them right now and I'm going to make sure that this is approved and if it is I'm gonna call you back so we can talk about everything and I was like oh my gosh I can't believe this like so she calls my insurance yes turns out the person who called her and told her that my reduction was not approved was only look looking at the nipple graph they were not looking at the breast reduction it goes yes it has been approved I am going to talk to the doctor talk to the hospital and we'll get things rolling literally the next day she called me and she was like you want to, uh we want to have another appointment with you with the doctor just so we can go over everything because it's been months so literally i think two weeks later after that i had my appointment with my doctor so i got on a zoom call with my doctor literally i didn't even go in there i got on a zoom call with my doctor like a week and a half later and we talked about it he was like hey you know i'm going over your file it's been a while um, i looked at you so just so you guys know my measurements were before I started losing weight, I was a 30, I was a 40 F. Um, and then after I lost weight, I was like a 36. Like right now I'm a 36 around. I'm a 36, maybe 38 sometimes if I'm like a little swollen. Like right now I'm swollen because of surgery. But when my swelling goes down, kind of, I'm a 36. 36 F. So my boobs didn't actually go down at all. Like I lost a little bit of volume on my boobs, but like they were still very big. So the doctor's concern was that insurance companies make you take out a certain amount of like, um, like they, you have to take out a certain amount per breast. So his concern was that they were going to ask for too much in order to approve my surgery. And it was going to take me down to like an A cup or something like that. That was his concern. So he was like, hey, if they say like 700, um, I'm probably not going to be able to do it. But it so happened that they said 500, which 500 is like a pound and a half or a little over a pound. And he was like, I think we can do that. And we talked about you being a B anyway. So I was really happy with being a B. I wanted to go as low as possible, you guys, as I didn't want to be an A. I still wanted to have, you know, a little something going on, but I did not want to be to feel heavy at all so he was like yes i think we can do this and the one thing that made me feel really comfortable about my surgeon as well is i had asked a question because i was getting really worried and i was like what if i'm on the table and you guys are not able to take out you know the amount that the insurance wants because you never really know until you're there if you have enough breast mass and breast tissue right that your doctor can estimate it and they weigh your breast they measure your breast so they feel good about it but you're not sure until you're there and sometimes in order to preserve like sensation they can't take out too much he was like don't worry about it i've dealt with this before i am going to do right by you that made me feel 
so at ease and I was like, okay, let's do it. Literally after that phone call, I got a message from his assistant. She goes, hey, we have the 22nd and the 30th available for surgery. And I was like, oh, <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, let's do the 30th of April. It's going to give me time to get everything sorted out at work, put in for my leave of absence and all of that, get all that sorted with work. And that helped me do all my leave of absence paperwork, my uh, disability paperwork. We'll get into that. Um, yeah. So scheduled surgery was scheduled for the 30th and then for went in for my pre-op appointment one week before my surgery i did do an fmla at work which is like a family medical leave of absence but i did it for myself i sent that over to my doctor's office and i also applied through my insurance i my company covers um and i think i pay for part of it i don't know if i pay for it but i know that i am opted in for all those things i do they do have a short-term health disability and with breast reductions i can't really lift my arms past a certain point i can't pick up things i can't push things i literally can't do anything that's going to strain the muscle or i'm going to literally tear every stitch <laughs> that I have on right now so I went to my pre-op appointment we talked about everything um and then he asked me again what what size you want to be I told him I wanted to be a b and we agreed and then I left and then literally a week later prepped myself prepped my house my brother um was taking care of me um throughout that so um the day of the surgery um I have the surgery close to my home, a hospital close to my home here. And my surgery was at, I got to the hospital at 5 a.m. And the doctor came in around 6, I want to say, 6, 6.30. And he did all my measurements and everything. I did have the anchor technique, which the anchor technique is you go around the areola, then from the areola down, and then under the breast. So up down and around i also asked to have my areola well i think it comes with it but i just wanted to make sure to have my areola size reduced just because to be proportionate he asked me again he was drawing on me i mean he was very meticulous of, as far as like distances and all of that so um he asked me again what size do you want to be and i said i want to be a b and they constantly ask you when you go into the surgery what surgery are you here for they just want to make sure so even when i got to the operating room they were like what surgery are you here for and i was like a breast reduction so yeah i felt really safe um also my anesthesiologist was a black woman i wish i would have had time to thank her but i was asleep recovering um but uh you're not supposed to have lash extensions um uh, when you have surgery and you're not supposed to have nails i had both thank god my nails are fairly short so the machine that checks your pulse and all that uh, your vitals was able to fit over my nail and my nails are pretty sheer and clear so they were able to still look at the bed of my nails to make sure that i was getting enough oxygen in my body so they were like okay that's good and then uh for my lashes like i said my anesthesiologist was a, my anesthesiologist was a black woman she was like i got you girl she ended up putting some gauzes down before she taped my eyes shut for surgery and i woke up with all my lashes she did such an amazing job so my whole entire medical team was top tier i feel like they really made me feel comfortable my nurse, like everyone really made me feel comfortable. I was in a private room before surgery with my brother. Um, I was able to like call and talk to my family and my friends. And I started getting really nervous when I went into the operating room, went in and lay down on the table. And then that was it. I don't remember anything. Woke up around 1039. I'll remember that because I asked the nurse, I was like, what time is it? 1039, I woke up. Um, so that means my surgery was probably over like around 10 because it usually takes around 30 minutes to wake up, 15, 30 minutes to wake up. So, um, I woke up in excruciating pain. Like I felt like there was a burning sensation. I feel like somebody had cut my chest and was burning it with a lighter. Like I was in such intense pain. I remember waking up and telling the nurse, like the first thing I said was, what time is it? And when she told me the time and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in so much pain. And I was like, well, do I get to go home? She goes, no, you have to be up for a little while. Thank God this hospital, they don't rush you out. She was like, we want you to be up for a little while and not just stay up and be stable before we let you go home. 
So I thought I was. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm ready to go. Passed out. Done. I was out again. When I woke up the second time, it was 12. Okay, the second time that I woke up, um, I asked to be taken up. I needed to use the restroom. I used the restroom. And it just so happened that I got my period the day before my surgery. So it was just, it was a mess. So <laughs> I used the restroom and everything. And then um, they helped me put my clothes on, girl, moving my arms. I went in with very comfortable clothes. So I just got dressed. They put me in the wheelchair, rolled me outside. My brother got me, we went home. Thank God it was only like a six minute ride to go home. So it was quick. I got home. And all I just, I just felt pain. And thank God for me, I had picked up all my medication um, a couple of days before. So all I did was I took my nerve blocking pain. I took my pain medication. I took, I think my muscle relaxer as well. And I took my antibiotic and I was gone, baby. Like I was out. <laughs> I was out for the rest of the day. So um, the pain... For the first three days, the pain was an 8 out of 10, you guys. It was an 8 out of 10. As soon as my medication was wearing off, it was an 8 out of 10. I had to sleep on my back the whole time. Thank God for my bed. My bed does go up. Thank God I got the bed in the divorce because, girl, worth it. <laughs> The bed does have an adjustable base, so I didn't have to buy any wedge pillows or anything like that because my bed did move up and all of that. Um, I did have some pillows around me, but you guys, it's been ex excruciating sleeping on my back. Um, I still am sleeping on my back. I have not been cleared to sleep on my sides just yet. Yes, um, after the first week, I was able to come off of my pain medication, and I wasn't taking it at all because they had me on hydrocodone, and that stuff is way too strong. Um, so after the first week I was completely off of hydrocodone um, so that was good um, I think there was only once the second week where I had to um, use hydrocodone in the present right now like I said I'm about to be three weeks off the second week was a little bit easier so a little hard really really hard to like lift my hands up like my first shower I almost passed that I showered three days Three days after surgery. I know you can shower like 24 hours after or 72 hours. I was like, girl, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. My brother went and got me some body wipes, and I just wiped, and I was like, I'm not about to play these games at all. Uh, but the third third day, I want to say third or fourth, I ended up taking off all the gauze, and uh, it was just my brother here, so he couldn't come in and help me or anything like that. So I ended up calling my sister. <laughs> I ended up calling my sister on the phone. I was like, listen, just be on the phone so that like if I pass out or something, somebody can come get me. So she was on the phone with me. I showered and um, I tried to get into the shower to shower and I quickly realized that I couldn't. So what I ended up doing was um, I actually used uh, my bathtub and I sat down on like my little I had like a little chair in my bath in my closet I took it in my bathroom I sat down on that and I was literally like putting soap on the thing and like washing myself like my bathroom was a mess when I was done but I was literally giving myself kind of like a sponge bath you might say so that's what I did the first day and it wasn't until the day after that where I felt a little no two days after that that I felt a little bit strong to actually get into the shower and wash myself now I am a three weeks post-op I'm gonna get up a little bit so that you guys can see so I've gone down significantly you can see I'm so very swollen but I'm not a swollen last week it was literally like my boobs were like literally up to like here but they are um unswelling right now and they're dropping a little bit which is great um I usually stay in like my bra um but I just took it off just for the video for today but this still gives me some support but I could have never been able to wear a dress like this before without a bra. So amazing. Um, I'm going to have to wear my garment for six weeks, my bra for six weeks. Um, and then after that, hopefully I get cleared to kind of wear other bras and all of that. But I'm just so excited to be able to run, to be able to exercise, to be able to wear clothes that I've never just things that, have, that were never available to me before but this was life-changing to me I do not regret it if this is something that you're thinking about and if it's something you really want to do 1000% do it yeah I just feel like I wish I would have done this a lot sooner I feel amazing you guys um 
yeah so right now i'm just going through my healing i still have bandages like going around the areola area and then i have uh not bandages but i have um surgical tape and around it is so itchy you guys so itchy and like so it's getting removed on monday so i'm so excited a little scared because i feel like it's gonna hurt i can tell that my incision is starting to scab up a little bit but my incisions go from like the middle here you can probably see a little bit of the tape there they go from inside all the way out to here i want to say he really pulled in my sides in when he did it so that i wouldn't have a lot of like bra fat and all of that he did an excellent job you guys like we can get into the video of how well he proportioned everything but yeah and he it just looks it looks amazing you guys it looks I have super body dysmorphia because I'm like, who is that girl? But it looks amazing. It looks great. I feel great. I'm recovering well. I'm so really, really tired. So whenever I do anything like this and I move around a little bit, I have to go take a nap afterwards. But yes, I just wanted to come and do this quick video. Let me know down below if you guys have any questions that I didn't get to answer. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye.